This is Las Vegas Real Estate Now, where we bring you the three E's, educate, empower, and engage. I'm your host, Harvey Blankfeld, along with our co-host, Shelly Brown, and we've been selling homes here in Southern Nevada since 1988. Shelly and I are also very proud to be part of the Real Estate Radio Network. That is a national network of local real estate professionals delivering timely, balanced truths about local market conditions. And with us now in studio, we have Lee Dreisen. Uh, he has had over 20 years of experience representing real estate licensees, buyers and sellers in mediations, arbitrations, and, co- and contested hearings. He's also got a master's of law in taxation, and most importantly, just became an empty nester. And I understand you're enjoying every minute of that, huh? Every minute. Lee, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the <laughs> show. You. The seller's real property disclosure is a form that we always use when we uh, convey homes here in Southern Nevada, or all over the state for that matter. And there's always some kind of twists or turns to that. You've, I'm sure you've seen some crazy stuff. It, it is, interestingly enough, Harvey, and I guess maybe it's not a surprise that those disclosure issues are the single biggest uh, source of litigation, whether it's uh, buyers suing sellers, suing their agents. Uh, it just, and it, it's not a new requirement. The forms haven't just come around no. recently. And so you would think by now that this would be a non-issue, and yet it continues on our practice to be the biggest source of litigation. W- one of the issues that we saw pop up around 2000 was a significant number of cases that were being asserted for mold litigation. Okay. And what was interesting is, um, at that time, the sellers were property disclosure forms virtually asked no questions about water contamination and mold. Mm -hmm. It did ask a question about whether you had any water in a crawl space, and we found that most agents weren't exactly sure what a crawl space was, and if they did, they didn't know where it was. I had a crawl space in Reno, so I happen to know what it is, but they don't know it here. And the other question it asked is, do do you have a problem with your roof? Well, the problem is, is that if you had a roof leak three years ago, and now you submit that uh, real property disclosure form to your client, and he believes that the repair has been completed, Mm -hmm. are they going to disclose, I have a problem with the roof? And the answer is no. And so what happened was we had started working with some of the largest residential brokers in town about doing what's called a mold waiver slash disclosure form. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting is that after we introduced that form, uh, the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors adopted that as a form. And about six months after that, we saw some of the most sweeping changes that the real estate division had done to their form, uh, which is now... Uh, one of the first questions out of the box is, do you now or have you had, have you had water yes. intrusion? Mm-hmm. And there's also a question that's worded the exact same way about mold. Mm-hmm. Do you now or have you had mm-hmm. mold contamination? And so what we've done is we've tried to raise the level of care and the level of disclosure. Yes. Now, let me ask you this. Does it say on the seller's real property disclosure that you can sue for three times the cost of the repair? Can you sue for more? What's the law on that? Well, that's the issue, is that if you're able to establish that one, it was a material adverse condition, two, you had actual knowledge, Mm -hmm. and three, you didn't disclose, you could potentially be held for three times the amount of damages for the repairs of that problem. You've been listening to Las Vegas Real Estate Now with hosts Harvey Blankfeld and Shelley Brown. Please tune in every Saturday at 11 a.m. right here on News Talk 720 KDWN.